Okay, I finally built my Zoom 75 Tiger and what I can say, this thing is a beast. Today, in this video, I will show you what you will get inside the box, how to assemble this keyboard, what about sound test, what about web driver, screen and as a summary, does it make sense for your first custom mechanical keyboard or it's too complicated? Okay guys, so first of all you will get a huge box with a Zoom 75 and everything will be inside and everything will be disassembled. So if you are newcomer to the area of custom mechanical keyboards, it may be a little bit too complicated for you, but uh, it's not super complicated. So you will be able to go through, but you need some passion and time. Uh, and just to be careful because it's not a simple mechanical keyboard. So in general you can see right now on your screens but you need to go through all stages. You will have a separate PCB, you will have a separate switch plate, you will have a separate uh, infill between PCB and switch plate. Also you will have a um, some dampening foam for the case itself, right? What is good is that we have a bow catch mechanism so you can easily uh, disassemble and assemble this board without screwdriver at all right uh, what is not so easy is that you will need to spend time to insert and make sure that all pr properly secured with the stabilizers don't forget to add some lubricant into them because they are not pre-looped by default right you need to understand what layout are you using right uh, ESO or uh, standard one because you have both options on PCB for different switch positions so just be careful and basically that's also you have your PCB sandwich assembled with the switches you can use whatever you want I have my Echo Pro switches version 3 and I have three of them like a blue uh, black and green one they are different with different sound right so I like them uh, in this way so to be able to connect PCB to the um, uh, bottom part of the case, you need just to press it down. You have several options how to arrange your gasket, right? I, I have my black silicone uh, gaskets and, uh, and pins and you have a magnet connection for your battery, right? So you need just to carefully press it together and it will catch um, interface of the battery and you have another two interfaces on the right side one for the screen one for the uh, scroll so be careful with with them as well so from one side it's hot swappable case from other side you need each time be careful with these connections or connectors right to place them um, in a proper slot so you can close the upper shell right and just firmly pressed and that's all basically right you have your tiga or you have your zoom 75 tiga so from the overall point of view this is a 75 percent mechanical keyboard with a very nice um, screen on the right side with a lot of information and i will show you later with uh, small videos or GI files with the settings of like weather, time, connection, um, Mac or Win, like USB, wireless or Bluetooth. And yes, this keyboard is wireless, so you can connect up to five devices and you can use it with Mac or with Windows. You have a scroll on the right side, uh, this mechanical scroll, and by default it will change sound uh, volume, right? On the back side we have this nice shield and you, you can have many of them, right? So it's like a small customization part and you have USB port. On the back side you have a like piece of art with this grill and a weight plate and some silicone feeds. Also I have a funny um, blue escape button, right? Small drawback for me uh, on this stage that if you can see escape button is not really centered uh, in a slot it's more to the left side which is a little bit annoying for me right because i want to have it everything like properly aligned and in this case it's a little bit off 
Okay, you can use any switches and you can you can use any switch plates and uh, in fields up and down. So the sound of this keyboard is totally depends on you. And today I will show you just how this keyboard sounds with echo switches. I have three of them. They are really different from the sound point of view, right? But let's check how it sounds. Okay, you heard the sound, sound is amazing as always. You can make it louder, you can make it more silent. It all depends on you and how you will build this keyboard. And it's like a lot of different options. This one is just one of many options. Okay, from the driver point of view, we have a kind of via driver and uh, you can change standard settings, uh, keys, macros, lights, etc interesting moment in a setting you can have a um, delay in milliseconds the smallest is one uh, milliseconds which means that keyboard is works with one uh, thousand megahertz pulling rate right and you have 1k pulling rate in uh, keyboard inspector so I, i've tested and i can confirm this and it means that this is pretty good for gaming, you don't need any, any more than 1K. It's not magnetic switches, right? But again, guys, like all together 1K and proper mechanical structure allows you to type, game, do whatever you want with this keyboard. So it was again a little small drawback, I was not able to update the firmware, I just don't know how it works. Uh, this small piece of software saying that a keyboard is not connected and I was not able to uh, download and upload new firmware into this uh, keyboard. If you know what could be the reason, please leave a uh, comment in a comment section under this video and in this way you will help other guys to understand how to do it. From RGB point of view, we have a pretty bright RGB. Again, it will depend on the keycaps. Today I have a um, not shine through keycaps, it's just double shot PBT red uh, keycaps, right? Just to complement with the red color altogether, and I like it a lot. But again, if you want to have a little bit like special set of keycaps with maybe transparent bottom part, it will be just as brightful as it can be. Okay, guys, as a summary, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, is it too much for your first uh, mechanical keyboard? Yes and no. Even for me, um, with several years uh, in this hobby and after messing with hundreds of keyboards, it was not easy sometimes to align the switches and PCB and um, stabilizers. It's all a little bit like little bit flimsy. I'm not saying that it's low quality or anything like that, no, but you need to understand what are the switches, pins, how to position switch to the left, right, up and down, how to insert stabilizers, where you can push a little bit more when you shouldn't push because it's all pretty tiny uh, mechanisms, right? So if you have a passion, if you have a time and you're pretty calm man, right, you can try this as your first mechanical keyboard, but in 90% of the cases it will be a little bit too much as a first try. So maybe you can start with something more easy to assemble. But if you are gonna to do so, you will get at the end a really beast. This keyboard it looks amazing, works amazing, the screen is pretty funny and you can customize a lot, you can customize this keyboard a lot. It's just a Lego in a world of mechanical keyboard. You can use so many options how to assemble it from inside that each time it will be a new keyboard. And from this point of view, this Zoom 75 Tiga, just a great keyboard for real fans.